Now, one of, the, one of the diseases that we've been getting a lot of phone calls about over the past couple of years has been cedar apple rust. However, our apple trees in Nebraska also have another very devastating disease that, at least in 2020, was more common, or in 2021, was more common in certain areas. And that fungal, that fungal disease is apple scab. Now, apple scab not only affects apple trees, but it also affects crab apples. We'll see it on pears on occasion, uh, cotone asters, and also the mountain ash can get this fungal, this fungal disease. Apple scab is caused by the fungus Venturia inequalis, and this fungus overwinters on leaves that were infected last year that remained on the ground. Um, as the as environmental as the as it warms up a little bit in the spring, this the fungus becomes active on those fallen leaves and will be and be, be splashed um, via rain and wind blown onto new and emerging leaves early in the spring as they are first coming out. Now, when we th the symptoms of scab are very different than what we see with cedar apple rust. With apple scab, uh, symptoms often start as just a dark green or maybe a brown cottony or fuzzy growth on those, on those new leaves. But eventually, those leaves will turn generally yellow but there may be some islands that remain green on those leaves. And compare that to cedar apple rust, which often has a, a more red or orange um, colored lesion, but on the underside of the leaves with apple rust, we get some nice teleal horns that are produced. With apple scab, we do not get those horns and there's really no growth on the underside of those leaves. The biggest symptom for, the biggest foliar symptom for apple scab are the leaves turning a general, general yellowing with some of those green islands. Now apple scab also can infect the fruit. When it infects the fruit, we get a cracked lesion. Um, as the name implies, it looks a little bit scabby. But in addition to that scabby appearance of the fruit, it can cause fruit deformation and also just reduce the reduce fruit size. Apple scab tends to be most serious when we have cool, wet springs that delay that leaf emergence, but also provide much more favorable conditions for that fungus to, to cause infection. When we have warm, dry, dry springs and weather, apple scab tends not to cause as much of an issue. Now, unfortunately, apple scab will continue to cause, will continue to infect throughout the, throughout the growing season. And so if, when we have, when we have um, cool wet conditions in the spring and we have a lot of early infection, well then any other time throughout the season that we have extended periods of cool wet weather, we can get more disease development for, for apple scab. And typically about 10 days after that cool wet weather, we'll start to see these symptoms occurring. As far as controlling this disease, one of the best things that you can do is to plant a resistant variety. Um, especially if, you, if, it's an, if, it's a pro, if it's something that you have dealt with for a few years in a row and you're thinking about a replacement tree, really recommend checking to make sure that you are getting a resistant variety, as that will always be your easiest and cheapest form of control. The other thing that we can do to greatly cut down on scab is making sure that we're selecting the right site and that we are, that we're selecting a site that gets at least six hours of full sunlight each day. The more sunlight we have, the easier those leaves will dry off, thus reducing the amount of infection pressure that, that we can have. Similarly, making sure that we're pruning the trees as needed to increase airflow through the canopy also reduces that wetness period. Now in certain situations, fungicides may be warranted for, for apple scab, but in most landscape situations, we don't recommend it. And the reason for that is fungicide control is very difficult. We have to get complete control, not only of every leaf, but also we have to make sure the underside of those leaves are, being, are, are reaching coverage as well. And unless we're doing some of the other things making such as pruning, 
using resistant varieties and making sure we're selecting the right the correct site for the plant. Fungicides often are not a, are not an effective control of apple scab.